Hello, this is Mike at Gamer Scratch, and welcome to This Week in Game Dev. This is week 38, and this is basically a look at what happened in the world of game development for the week ending August the 29th of 2016. Now, this is actually for the two weeks ending August 29th, so I didn't do one last week because, frankly, there wasn't enough news to cover. We're in the dog days of summer, and it really shows. Obviously, in summer, things slow down a bit. People don't release quite as much stuff. You know, either they're on holidays or kids are on holidays. People just don't work in the summer. So that's what we're starting to see in the world of game development and everywhere else, frankly. So uh, even with two weeks combined, if I'm completely honest, there's not a lot of excitement this week. But without further ado, let's jump in. Now, as always, there is going to be a link with all of the links available down below. So if you miss something or you want more details, just check out the link in the comments below and you can get all the stories we're about to look at. Now, the very first release of the last two weeks back on August the 16th was Tiled. 0.17 was released. Now, Tiled is a very cool open source, um, QT-based, C++, um, written, which really doesn't matter, I guess, um, level editing software. It's 2D was tiled based, which is why the name tiled comes in, but now more and more it's actually capable of creating non tiled levels as well. Uh, the biggest thing about this particular release is that it added theming. Uh, so you've got this new dark theme available. So if you didn't like the original theme, there is now this other theme option. And you've seen a lot of, um, you know, smaller releases, uh, general fixes and changes here and there, and some of the updates to the translations. Um, but the big thing, again, is that uh, theming change there. Definitely a cool one. They've also added custom property for color and file types for the um, appropriate picker. So if you add a color in, you get an RGB color picker. Uh, you pick a file, it'll go to the file browser, allow you to choose one right there. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Tiled, I've actually got a full tutorial series on Game From Scratch that I did. Uh, it's, it's here on a, a YouTube channel for it as well. There's about six or seven parts to it that will walk you through everything you need to know about getting started with Tiled. Uh, now, next part of this release was Unity released patch 5.4.0 P2. Not a lot of excitement in this patch, to be honest. Um, update the Oculus Rift version, which is weird because they do this again in the next patch. Um, some networking changes. Again, nothing really fun here. Nothing, uh, you know, major or earth shattering. And a bunch of fixes. And you know what? I'm going to jump ahead and we'll ruin a different piece because uh, 5.4.0.2. Uh, P3 was released as well, which was on um, yeah yesterday actually, or at least I reported it yesterday. And once again, not a whole lot to it, a bunch of bug fixes, etc. But still, uh, nice to see development going on there in Unity world. And for either of those, again, you download it from their QA site, linked from both of those stories. Um, now, GLFW 3.2.1 was released. If you've never heard of it, GLFW, I'm not actually sure if that's an acronym or not, to be honest. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, but anyways, it's a OpenGL based library for windowing. See, OpenGL is a graphics library. What it is not is a window library or an input handling library. There is no native window creation in OpenGL. So you've got to have some code, either your own or um, some you download that will go ahead and uh, basically um, you know, create the window for you and then you pass the window handle into OpenGL. Well, that's exactly what GLFW does for you. It provides a cross-platform implementation of a windowing, a window creation, and input handling, things like uh, keyboard joystick, etc. Uh, very similar in scope to what, uh, there's another one called GLUT, G-L-U-T, which is kind of the original or OG version of this, but it is old and it's very unsupported these days. So GLFW is one of the most used. Uh, a lot of people also use SFML for the same purpose. So basically for a 3D game, they'll use SFML uh, for doing the windowing and the input handling and then OpenGL for all of the graphics work. Uh, so that's what GLFW is, 3.12. The big thing here is basically the ability to statically link to the Vulkan loader. Um, so on-demand loading of Vulkan and, and uh, context creation API libraries. Now Vulkan is basically the next version of OpenGL. Uh, it's much more low level and it's basically designed to work better with existing hardware or OpenGL style hardware. Uh, another game engine release this week was uh, LibGDX 1.9.4 was released, and there was a grand total of five things in this release. So, um, not the world's most earth-shattering release at all, but it is nice to see that there are updates happening. And you know, you're going to see this. Um, open, uh, LibGDX is a very um, mature library. Uh, you know, you're not going to see massive amounts of new functionality because it is for the most part complete. So you're gonna basically see you know, little changes and fixes, etc. And that's exactly what this particular release is. Um, another announcement, I actually did a video on this. I don't know if you've been watching my channel for this one, but there was a video earlier uh, this week or maybe the end of last week. Uh, Facebook came out and pretty much announced that they're going to create, it originally started life as Facebook Arcade. I'm not gonna give a lot of detail because I did do a video on it. So if you're interested, uh, do check out that video. It's linked here. 
think I linked it. Okay, I didn't link it. Um, I'll link it down below as well. Uh, but basically, they're trying to take a run at Steam. Uh, it's you know an offline um, store, so you don't run it on Facebook's page, but it has access to all the Facebook backends, so leaderboards, friend lists, etc. But it's a standalone arcade, and originally it's going to start with Facebooky games, things like you know Clash of Kings and um, Bejeweled and Candy Crush and all that crap. Uh, but they're also trying to focus heavily on the more you know, desktop -y environment. And one of the things they're doing there is they're partnering with uh, Unity. So you can actually use Unity to build games directly for the Facebook store that have Facebook integration, you know, leaderboards and all that other stuff I just talked about, but basically that run in their arcade. And this is another market for indies to get developed. And it could actually be an interesting deal because um, we know Google App Store kind of sucked for discoverability. So, you know, you create your game, you love your game, you publish your game in the world and nobody finds it because you're not a multi-billion dollar company. And that's where Facebook Facebook kind of, sorry, um, App Store kind of sucked and where iTunes kind of sucks. Uh, so hopefully Facebook does go ahead and get this right. If nothing else, it's possibly another marketplace for game developers to sell their PC titles. So interesting to see how that one turns out. Uh, another thing that happened this week was Unreal Engine forums were hacked. Um, it's not the end of the world by any means. All they got was email addresses. There's no passwords, not even salted or encrypted passwords were taken at all. So the passwords were in a different location. I imagine your email has been taken and some of your personal information, probably the stuff that's available. Um, in all honesty, you could get most of this by farming a forum using a bot anyways. So it's not the end of the world here, but it is annoying. And if you start seeing some more spam, um, and you probably have Epic Games to thank for this. It also applied to a couple of their legacy forms for games. Um, Infinity Blade, uh, the old UDK, so basically uh, Unreal Engine 4 earlier versions, so 3 and earlier. Uh, previous Unreal Tournament, Gears of War forums, they all had their you know, information hacked as well. But again, no passwords, so that's definitely a good part of this bad news. Uh, another game engine released in this period was CryEngine 5.2 was released. Now the biggest feature of 5.2 by far for many people is going to be the standalone FBX importer is now much better. Uh, specifically, it now has better support for animations and materials before it could only import static meshes. This is important because the entire um, content pipeline for CryEngine was built around uh, importers from uh, uh, Max and Maya. So if you didn't use Max and you didn't use Maya, it was very hard to get content into CryEngine. So since they've been open sourced and you know they're trying to be more Blender friendly or you know various other architectural tools out there friendly, they created a standalone importer. So that, that importer got a lot more functionality here. They also updated their cloth simulator vCloth to 2.0, uh, some new templates for their C++ starter kits, which include first person, third person, side scroller, top down, and rolling ball physics um, templates to get you started. Uh, they're improving their documentation. They're improving the UIs and widgets in their sandbox. Um, do, 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 that's pretty much about it from this particular release. Um, another thing that happened game engine wise was Unreal Engine 4.13 was uh, released in preview as well. Uh, unlike uh, the various patches for Unity, these are previews so they are not certified as being you know, safe to use. You know, So you only use them um, if they fix a particular problem for you or they add a new feature, you know, in your in development and you can afford some instability and problems. And truth of the matter is there's not really a lot here. Uh, it's mostly bug fixes. So if you're suffering from one of these particular bugs, uh, do consider trying the patch out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you can skip it. Uh, but since the forums were down, uh, there's no actual conversation about this one, so it's actually only available on their blog. Uh, but you can grab it through the uh, Unreal Engine Epic Game Launcher, just like normal. And that was it. That was this week in news. Uh, actually, there's two weeks in news. Again, not an exceeding amount of excitement going on, but the bright side or the downside, depends on your perspective here, we're pretty much in the last week of summer. And I normally, you know, by mid-September, I would expect things to start picking up. So hopefully we'll start getting much more interesting summaries for news, uh, much more interesting releases, broader releases, etc. Uh, and if you do want to get those news releases, please do click subscribe. We do this um, generally every week, unless there's not enough news to justify it, then we do it every two weeks. But you do get your nice news summary all in one place. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, do please click like and subscribe. And and I will see you all later.